Gamers, we're back for another week. Thank you for listening to episode 78 we're at of the Retro Gamers. Larry here. And Anthony here. What's going on, Ant? Uh, doing all right for episode 77. <laughs> <laughs> well, good thing we're on 78 now. Well, that's good. Uh, th- the only reason why I bring up 77 is because I believe I missed an episode at one point throughout the run. So. Oh, really? <laughs> that's true. <laughs> So I'm at least one behind. I may have missed two, so this is only episode 76. Technically for you, and we're not even counting the special editions. No, without counting the special editions, of course. If we, if we count those, then I'm still behind. Oh. So. <laughs> how's, uh, how's everything going there on the West Coast? Uh, everything is great here. You know, it's February. Um, Punxsutawney Phil saw his shadow, six weeks of winter, and it was 90 degrees yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's, that's L.A. weather for you. L.A. February. Gotta love it. Loving the, the 30 degrees that it is, probably even right now as we speak here on Long Island. Ah, lovely. Well, you know, I went out this morning and it was uh, in the mid-50s and it'll be about 75, 80 by the time it hits noon. Oof. Uh, no, thank you. It's, this, uh, it's January. No, it's February. It should be still cold. No, no, no. We're in, we are in February. All right. Oh, it's please. officially February. I know. The first month of the year, already gone. Gonski. Oh, well. Gonski. And we wasted it gaming. Yes. Well worth it. <laughs> Well worth it, trust me. As uh, yes, yes, yes. Really, gaming, gaming's picking up. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Twenty eighteen will be the year of retro gaming. I feel big time, like the explosion of retro gaming. Uh, time will tell, I guess. But um, just to point out some non-retro gaming um, stuff. Yesterday we uh, we tested out uh, a YouTube live stream, yeah. and. Um, it was not a retro game. We were we were testing out um, <clears throat> PlayStation Four. We were trying out some WWE Two K eighteen, and our goal was actually to throw a little retro into it by having a retro Royal Rumble because w- because WWE Two K eighteen has a lot of retro wrestlers in it, mm-hmm. a lot of old school guys. But only to find out that um, the game does not the game the game does not support online Royal Rumble play. Yeah. I mean the closest, wah, wah. yeah, the closest we would have gotten would be a battle royal, but uh, Royal Rumble certainly is is special because of what it is, especially with this past weekend with the Royal Rumble and the first ever women's Royal Rumble, uh, would be cool to have a gimmick Royal Rumble, if you will. Yes, and uh, you know I'll probably live stream one sometime this week if I can. Maybe I'll do it during the Super Bowl just okay. for fun. That works. There you go. Do yeah, because it's hot. Well, yeah. But, well, you know what? It, it'll be better than the halftime show. <laughs> oh, JT. Justin Timberlake? Uh, yeah. I mean, without Janet Jackson, I don't think he's anything <laughs> for the halftime show. Everyone's got their finger on the sensor button. <laughs> yes, they are ready to go. But it's not an MTV-sponsored halftime show, so I think we're safe. I think so. I think so. Actually, if it was an MTV-sponsored halftime show today, I think it would be fine, too. <laughs> yeah, probably, right? <laughs> Times have changed over 17 years. What was that, 2000, 2001? Oh, uh, I don't know. I think it was closer to 2003 or four. Oh, okay. <clears throat> that was great. I missed it, too. I, that was the one time I turned away to get a potato chip. And they're like, oh, my uh, God, look what just happened. I was like, what? What just happened? No, no, I was watching, and I, I, I didn't even realize it until after they cut away. And I'm like, wait, what just happened? <laughs> I was like, did I did I see that right? <laughs> it was like it took my mind a minute to process it. Exactly, <laughs> live television, folks. Yes, always fun. Yeah, well, uh, but yeah, no, well, uh, it, it should be uh, interesting, especially if you do listen. If you broadcast for the halftime, I will be watching. Uh, I may, I may just do it just just for the fun of it. Why not? Go for it. Yes, the retro gamers will have a halftime show. Of course, this drops on Tuesday, so it happened two days ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry if you missed it. You can catch it on our site. <laughs> All right, cool. So we're gonna get into that, um, and uh, we got we got some good stuff to talk about here this week. And uh, as we w- listen, we're episode seventy eight. We are approaching episode one hundred rapidly. I know. I mean, and you know, after recording seventy five of these things with you, I have to say it's been absolutely fun. <laughs> totally fun every every single time. <laughs> what about those two that you don't remember? Oh, uh, seventy four. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, and we're not going to be the only ones who eventually will be celebrating 100. I do want to give a quick shout out. We want to give a quick shout out to uh, Victims and Villains, our buddy Josh over there, Captain Nostalgia, uh, who will be hitting 100 this week, I think. Uh, yes, I believe so. Con- congratulations. Or if, if he isn't hitting it this week, he is uh, closing in on it. So no, I, think, uh, he's I, think hit- he's, I think he's hitting it, yeah. Uh, is it this week? Well, congratulations, Josh. Uh, Victim, is vil- Victim and Villains, a great show. Everybody should check that out. Definitely, especially when we're on. Yes, well, you know, of, of course when we're on. Because I was just on recently. Uh, I'm the go-to <laughs> last-minute guest host, which is fine. That's cool. <laughs> well, you know, you, 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 only, you only have like 60 shows. I have three, maybe one more that will be monthly. We will see. I'm cool. debating. Well, you know. Pretty soon you'll be like the only person on podcast. <laughs> Me and Adam and Carolla. Be, yeah, you and Adam Carolla on just every podcast ever. <laughs> I'll take it as long as I get paid for it. Yes, but uh, let's uh, move on to talking about some retro gaming. Yes, no, how about that? Let's uh, let's get that. And almost like what I feel like is turning into a segment is um, what we got with the money we don't got. <laughs> Well, you know what? I think uh, I think that's more your segment than mine because uh, unlike you, I did uh, I did not go retro game shopping this week because I had to prioritize retro games or food shopping. So I went food shopping. Uh, you know what? Not the best. Not the best choice. No. But... <laughs> Listen, you can still get good stuff on the dollar menu. So. <laughs> Well, yes, if you want to truly throw yourself into the realm of debt. Uh, but, Larry, from what I understand, your uh, your credit card, once again, was uh, heavenly relied upon. Um, so yeah. what did you buy this week? Oh, man, I uh, I guess, of course, the... Oh, you... Um... Uh-oh. I believe something happened. No, yeah, I just... I dropped my book with our notes, our, our time notes. All right, there we are. We're good. Not that I wrote anything down yet. I bought a lot of stuff. All these photos will be up, of course, later on the uh, Instagram page at the underscore Retro Gamers and the Facebook page as well. Facebook.com slash Retro Gamers podcast. This week, I think we're also going to have a little bit of a uh, maybe an unboxing kind of sort of, if you will. Oh, what are we unboxing? Um, I wouldn't say necessarily unboxing. I bought some some trading cards, pack of trading cards. uh, Okay. ones, very old ones, so. I think we'll get into that, but let's get into it uh, right now. First, before we talk about the purchases, one thing I do want to talk about and share, um, my cousin um, was gracious enough, because he doesn't use it anymore, to hand me down a wonderful Game Gear. Ooh. Very nice condition Game Gear, in fact. That looks fantastic. Yep. Of course, the only difference was he had the batteries in, which had been in there for about 10 years. So... <laughs> So, um, how much? So, how much battery acid leaked out? That, oh, a bunch. So, what I did was I brought it to GameStop, who cleaned it up. Actually, I know you didn't see the before, but you, you know right. about battery acid and an epic story yep. that you used to tell. And oh, and that, that that story is epic, and I will not tell it on no, no, on, on, this, on this episode because it's not video game related. <laughs> Um, so he cleaned it up very nice. Unfortunately, though, because of the battery acid, probably the leakage, got into like the. Um, the uh, something else in here, like it'll turn on, but it doesn't really get the game going. So it just may be um, just a defunct system, but just cool to own, cool to have. Yeah, I was gonna say usually when battery acid leaks out, that that that's pretty much the death of yeah. uh, of anything. I brought the game on because he does. Uh, they do work over there. They do. Um, they fix systems. They they you know try bring systems back to life. So he cleaned it up nice. Um, mm-hmm. And he got it to turn on, but like I said, just the games won't work. But that's okay. I got that. That's cool. Um, also, this I didn't pick up from Game On, but I ordered it online because the price finally dropped to where it would be pretty much like what it would have been with shipping. But uh, I picked mm-hmm. up for nostalgic purposes because by the time you get there, who knows if it'll be available or not. Ooh. A is that the- super super Famicom classic. Oh, that's awesome! So, you know what? It was like it was ninety dollars on Amazon, which pretty much was the SNES classic after shipping. So yeah, that's about right. So that I have no problem with. That's what it looks like. Very cool. Yeah, um, I will be going to Japan again in March, so uh, I will I will keep my eye out for that. Oh, absolutely! I'm trying to remember if there are differences in the games. Uh, I think there might like be a few, four or five, yeah. Which I'm yeah, looking at so. the back of the box right now, so so that's cool. All right, so I got so that those are cool. 
So now here's the hole from GameStop. A uh, GameStop. God damn. Game on. Yeah, I was going to say, you keep saying GameStop, and uh, you know, I'm sure Game On is not going to enjoy hearing that if they ever listen back to these episodes. My bad, my bad. All right, so first let's start with Game Boy, which I'm going to give a shout-out to our boy Charles. Charles Herbert. Yes. Who, a uh, big fan of the show, started the, uh, or at least popularized, hashtag VB Sucks. Yes, and- thank you, Charlie. Please get your uh, hashtag VB Sucks merchandise on, our, on our, whatever our merch page is. T chip something something. Go to tchip.com, do a search for the retro gamers, do a search for VB Sucks. That's where you'll find our merchandise. Oh, I dropped it. Okay, so Larry Larry is having Larry a little case of the uh, the Butterfingers yeah, today. So, so you know. um, he picked this game up at uh, the retro gaming expo we were at this summer for Game mm-hmm. Boy Solar Striker. And Ooh. He, yeah, he, he talked a lot about this game. So I'm very and I played it. It's an awesome vertical scroller. Very cool. With. So, uh, yeah. well, you know, hopefully it still works after dropping it. <laughs> well, it landed on some stuff. Um, mm-hmm. With my uh, coming up, I per- I had to order a... I didn't have to, but I ordered... No, you did. You had to. A, it's uh, you. Retrobit uh, Super... Was it Super Retro Trio? Or Super Trio 3? It's called the Trio Three, basically. Yes, yes. Um, it's the one I've been looking at because I'm trying... I'm, I'm, I'm considering... Um, I'm considering replacing my original systems with a like a retro bit or something like that because uh, I don't want I don't want to use them until they break. So I'd like to just preserve them if I can. I, I agree with it. Actually, I had this conversation with Tristan at Game On, you know, about where I'm getting these systems, and of course he sells the old school systems that are in perfect condition. Um, right. So of course he's like, oh, why don't you get the old? It's like, there's nothing like playing on the old system. And I told him you're exactly right. There's nothing like playing on the original system. But with kind of almost like future proofing these games mm-hmm. with the newer systems, HDMI input, you know, the games look beautiful in HDMI. And then even he made a point. He's like, well, you know, you do stream. And it's a lot easier for me to stream using HDMI than like a regular composite or component hookup. So it's kind well, of. I, th- I thought the retro bit, though, I thought the retro bit trio was not HDMI, though. It is HDMI. Oh, good. I need to yep. buy it then. Yep. Okay. So it's got Nintendo, Super Nintendo, and Genesis, so I figured I'd start building my Genesis collection. All right, first, so what did we pick up for Genesis? First I picked up, which in my opinion is the closest to arcade um, port as possible, Ms. Pac-Man on Genesis. Ah, uh, yes. I. Oh, you only got the cartridge? Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it, he. I mean, he has a lot of games in box, but A, the cartridges are cheaper than the ones in box. That's And, um, you know... You're out of storage room. Yeah, that too. And there's only certain boxes I'll get. Not all of them. Um, So, yeah, cartridge. And this is the only version of Ms. Pac-Man that actually has where, well, they call it Boost, where she actually moves really fast, like in the arcade. Oh, yes, I remember that. And I do love it when you get to that. Absolutely. Uh, Okay, so now these two are in box. Technically, the the boxes are repoed, uh, reproed, but that's okay. The games inside are not. They're original. Okay. Uh, first, Contra Hardcore. Ooh, Love very this nice. Game. Great game on uh, on Genesis. First game you beat on stream. No, no, no. That was regular Contra. No, Super C. Uh, no, regular. Super C. I'm sorry. I can't keep... Too many Contras. <laughs> this is Contra Hardcore. And okay. I also picked up Spider-Man and Venom Maximum Carnage. I love that game. I have it for the Super Nintendo, I, and I've never, I've never beaten it. I had it for the Super Nintendo, but he had just gotten this one in on Genesis. I was like, and it looks nice and it. clean. And yeah, it looks great. Look at the red cartridge. Love the red cartridge Love on that. Yep. Cartridge. Now you know that there was a, there was another Spider-Man game as well on Super on the 16-bit. It was called Separation Anxiety. That was a sequel to this one. Uh, I, think, yeah, I think technically it was a sequel. That, yeah, I don't remember exactly what order they came in. Yeah. No, Maximum Carnage was fantastic, and I need to go back and beat that game. So that's Genesis. Let's now move on to the Super Nintendo. Okay. Uh, I got Spider-Man and X-Men. Arcade's Revenge. Arcade's Revenge. Yes, I have that. uh, I think I have that for both 16-bit systems. Okay. Uh, Also, another game I never beat because... um, in the beginning of the game, you have to play each character separately because the the, um, the idea behind the villain is Arcade is this eccentric millionaire that builds a um, a killer theme park called Murder World, and he puts <laughs> you know he puts 
puts the X-Men in different, you know, in different scenarios and you have to survive them. And I can never beat like, and you had to beat all of the first levels before you can move on. Like each character had their own separate level and I can never beat storm's level. I would always drown because she's, it's an underwater level. Oh man. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, I was like, man, I go, this sucks. I was like, every time I, I could beat all the other boards, but storm would always drown. And I'm like, damn, I just keep <laughs> killing her. And then, and then you can't move on because like you, I think you get, um, a certain number of lives, and I would use them all up drowning Storm. So, <laughs> oh, you think she maybe, like a heat maybe. wave, and all the water would dissipate? I, I I know. I mean, well, you know, I mean, she could she could use lightning, but I think she would just electrocute herself. So that doesn't help either. You know what happens to a toad when it's struck? Oh, don't! No, 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 no! <laughs> Please, still don't understand what that line means after eighteen years. Rumor has it that there was there were other lines that they were going to use, and that's the one they settled on. <laughs> And I'm like, I'm like, so you pick the worst one. <laughs> Apparently, you lose, you lose your South a- or your African accent in the future movies when you get struck by lightning. <laughs> yes, that is that is absolutely true. I think they just told her. I think they just told her. You know what? Just just don't. <laughs> just don't. <laughs> uh, also for Super Nintendo, this is a rarity. As much as I love the game, the the movie, the game. Nothing to do with the movie, but it's a very weird game, but weird enough where it's kind of fun to play. The Blues Brothers. I will take your word for that. I've never played it. It's a, it's just a weird one. It's hard to explain. But I'm assuming you're driving in the car. No. no well, at least I haven't gotten to that level yet. You're walking really? around. You, you collect records that you use as weapons. It's like your gun. Makes you sense. Know. But, okay. you know, like you, you, if, if you come across, it looks like a strawberry shortcake. You, you beef up. Like literally, like you tear through your shirt and you beef up and you're stronger for a few minutes. It's like Popeye. Almost, <laughs> almost. It's like I had my spinach, girl. No, no Carrie Fisher yet. <laughs> oh, why not? And then let's move to Nintendo. That was the biggest hole of all, Nintendo. Okay. All right, so we got Ghostbusters two. For Nintendo. Yeah. Good game. And. <laughs> Good game. <laughs> Did Ghostbusters make a good game? I'm sorry. <laughs> Actually, they did. Of course, it was all over in Japan. This is not a Japanese Ghostbusters. Well, we're talking about you're talking about the Xbox one. No, no, no. I'm talking about on Nintendo. Oh, they were talking about the or maybe no, no, the no. Genesis. No, no, no. I know they made a game, oh. but it wasn't good. We're talking about the one with the Ghostbusters symbol, and you're walking around the city and that crap. <laughs> no, that one was terrible. That's I'm, awful. But That's an there, awful game. This wasn't too bad. Ghostbusters two wasn't too bad. Okay. And there was Ghostbusters, I think, over in Japan, I think it was really good on Nintendo. Like, it had nothing to do with the one we had. Mm-hmm. I got to go back and remember that one. Um, only because of how, how GameStop, I said that one correctly, burnt me on this. I finally decided to pick up Turtles 3, the Manhattan Project. Ah, oh, very nice. That is, is that the one that's uh, tough to find? Yes. Okay. This one's a little, little, little tougher to find, so this one's a little, little more pricey, but that's okay. Uh, I was just going to say, you uh, you paid through the nose for that one, didn't no, you? No, no, I wouldn't say. None of these were really, quote-unquote, through the nose altogether. Okay. They were. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, well there's, no, there's no question about that. Um, here's a classic. A classic. And um, it was funny because when I went to put it, when I went to buy it, uh, Tristan, you know, kind of laid down a challenge. He's like, you know, if you can get through the first level of this without dying... I don't know, I would have probably gotten some, like, $5 store credit or something like that. Needless to say, I failed. But uh, okay. Kid Nicky, Radical Ninja. I love Kid Nicky. Kid I have Nikki, that game, too. Which, I mean, just look at that cover art. It's beautiful. I mean, that's nothing to do with the game. No, absolutely not. And I was going good on the first level. You know, just trucking through, doing good. Get, and then, I don't know if you remember the part, it's a little jump. But it's by like a like a water mill, a, a, a yes. water wheel. But mm-hmm. what happens is, you have the little gap. But as soon as that part of the screen comes on, then mm-hmm. the enemies just keep coming. Yes, and they don't stop. No, no, they don't. And I could not. I tried timing it, and just I jumped over, and wham! One of them got me. Yeah. Well, of course I got it on the second try, but well, I get my five dollars. Uh, are you sure it was five dollars? <laughs> And finally, probably would have gave you like a stick of gum. (laughs) Finally, uh, and now this is a hack. This is a hack, homebrew, I guess, a combo of the two. It's called Contra: Revenge of the Red Falcon. I've talked about this before. 
Oh, wow. It is... I mean, you thought Contra was tough to begin with. Mm-hmm. This game is epically more difficult. So difficult that you automatically start with eight lives. And the wow. first level is like almost as long as the first two to three levels combined. Uh, Contra. Contra, yeah. Okay. I so, mean, is the, okay, does the Konami code work in it? Uh, you know what? I haven't tried it because we were just, you know, we were playing around with it. But we, I don't know. We never dawned on us to try the Konami code. We are too busy trying to beat the first level. Oh, okay. Well, that is awesome. Epically, epically difficult. I'm very happy to have picked that up. And can't wait to play it this week when my uh, Trio 3 shows up. Very cool. So those were the games themselves. Now, here's the part I was talking about, what kind of sort of a little bit of an unboxing. Uh, I also picked up a couple of old school Nintendo Game Pack cards. Remember these? Holy cow, yes, I do. Oh, man. One of them. Now, one of them I want to keep closed forever. So, And you're going to open the other? I'll open the other one. I've opened one before. Okay. I have them away. No, uh, knowing you, um, you'll want to keep the Mario one. So I would say open the Link one. So Me, I'll, I would keep the Link one and open the Mario one. And I was going to ask you, which one do you think I should open? So, Or should we just randomize <laughs> I, it? No, I would say for you, keep, you would want the Mario one. Okay. I would say open the Link one. Okay. Here we go. Opening the link one. So, Ant, I don't know if you want to give him a, a heads up. These tops trading cards from back. Do you remember them? No, I do remember them because I used to buy them all the time in the store. So they were, um, you know, n- n- back in the late '80s when trading cards were huge. As uh, Larry is opening that, uh, when trading cards were huge, Nintendo got in on the game and they came out with their own power packs, which were you know twenty five cents packs of trading cards. <laughs> yeah. Um, I believe Mario and Link were the only two covers. Um, on the cards. I believe they were. And for 25 cents, how many cards did you get? Six? Five. You got five cards for 25 cents. And obviously, you know, like any card set, your goal was to, you know, complete the entire collection. Mm-hmm. Um, which I don't think I ever did. I don't think I have either. But funny, funny story, I have... Um, I have a bin full of trading cards that I collected and my dad collected um, that I haven't gone through yet. So there's a chance there may be some of those in there. Ooh, that'd be kind of cool. But I don't know because it's been a long time since I've been in there. Yeah. In the training card sets, I've been focusing on the comic books. Yeah, So, uh, but now that the comics are col- completed, uh, the training cards are next. So these trading cards came out in 1989, tops. Uh, mm-hmm. Three scratch-off cards and two stickers. The scratch-off Yeah, card- I remember the, stra- the scratch-off cards were really cool. They were like games themselves. Yes, so here's all right. So I have the two sticker cards, first set of stickers. And I remember, well, hold on. I remember specifically in the in the uh, scratch off cards, like you would get like a Legend of Zelda dungeon map, and yep. you would have to work your way through it. Yeah, the instru- and the instructions are on the back. Uh, we'll go over those in a few moments. Yeah. Um. So here's the stick again. I'll put these up on the Instagram page when this hits. So the first one, kind of Super Mario Brothers collection. S- stickers, very nice. Stickers, Prana Plant, Blooper, Blopper, Blopper, Blooper. Zoo, blooper, oh, blooper. Uh, blooper. Spiny and a fire flower. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, you'll like this sticker. Link. Ah, very nice. Link, 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 link. That's literally what it says. And the three games, the three scratch of games, the first one is Super Mario Brothers. Very nice. Oh, Fighting Bowser, too. Fighting Bowser with the princess there. And let's see what the instructions were. Super Mario Brothers, screen 10 of 10. That's right. Nice. Each card was a screen. That's right, because if you got all ten screens, it completed the level. Yeah. Scratch off first area, left side of card, until you uncover arrow. Then move to next scratch off area, the right side of the card. You can't win until at least one arrow and two levers are exposed. There you so go. You, you, so you just scratched randomly, and then you had you had three different things. You had a, uh, an arrow, find and move to the next area. Mm-hmm. Um, the levers, find two to win, and yep. the fireballs, find three, and you lose. Are you going to scratch it or not? I don't, that, I don't think so. Okay, that's unless fine. Unless I have a double. I have a couple of these packs that I've already opened. Unless that's a double. All right, All next, right so let's mo- move on. Next one, double dragon. Nice. Very nice. Find the two elevators to win. That's pretty straightforward. <laughs> and well, I got it. You got to give credit to Nintendo for at least making a trading card oh, set absolutely. entertaining. Absolutely. And the third one, Super Mario Brothers 2. Ah, very nice with the shy guy. 
Shy guy. Um, oh, this one's this one's got a lot more instructions. Find three shy guys and you lose. To win, you must cover uncover one arrow, one turn up, and one toss. Nice. Wow, that's cool. All right, that's a good collection there. I like that. Good stuff. Good stuff. And Very good. I will leave Mario to be closed forever. 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 You can ever? will. You can will it to your nephew. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you love all this stuff. Um, or cousins, so, yeah, I should say. That. That's my uh, and I and I told Tristan I'm like it's gonna be a while before I come back. Um, <laughs> I just and, and and rightfully so because um, you're spending way too much money. But while while we were um, while you were doing this, it reminded me to check in on the Kickstarter campaign for the NES Maker. Remember we talked about this yes, a few weeks ago. Someone actually mentioned that last night in the store too. Someone just uh, without I just overheard them talking like oh there's yeah, a thing so- on Kickstarter. Yeah, so um, the NES Maker, um, their goal was to raise $32,000 before the end of the campaign. Now, there are seven days left on their campaign. Uh, And for those of you who don't know what the NES Maker is, it's software. It's basically point-and-click software so you can can create your own NES games. Mm -hmm. Um, There's no coding involved. You just do the point-and-click thing, and you're set. Um, And... They are currently at, they were supposed to raise $32,000 to reach their goal. They are at $170,000. Last night they were like one sixty five when I checked. Yeah, so they're at one seventy, dollars and and I'm I'm actually happy I remembered it because I am going to purchase the software. I'm just trying to decide if I want only the software or the full toolkit because in the full toolkit you can actually – Put your game onto an NES cartridge. Yep, you can actually flash it. Yep, that's and then yeah, and of Which course is, if you, if you have one of those like those flash drive carts, um, you can also use it in there as well. Yeah, so so I'm debating on whether or not I should do that. And just so you know, they've reached all of their goals. So on top of the basic, uh, on top of the basic NES maker, which was going to release the adventure module for you to create. You can now, uh, they're now going to release the adventure module, the platformer, RPG, brawler, shooter, and music maker. Oh, okay. So you you can create your own music for your game. That's cool. So really, really awesome. Um, Definitely something uh, I'm going to back. In fact, I'm leaving the page open on my screen because I'm going to back it today. Otherwise, I'll forget. (laughs) Um, and I just need to decide: Do I just want the software? Or do I want the uh, the full toolkit? I think I want the toolkit. Toolkit sounds pretty cool. Yeah, so I'll probably blow the and that's and, and to be honest with you, for eighty eight bucks, you get the software and the toolkit. That's not too bad. That's not bad at all, in all honesty. Yeah, so uh, so definitely looking forward to that. Um, and then Larry, I will um, I will create games and sell them to you at a discount. That sounds good to me because I'm just or, throwing money away. Or I'll just sell them to Game On, and then Game On can sell them to you for more money. <laughs> probably even of a smarter choice. You'll probably get a better a better return. I probably would. All right, Larry, here we are again. And it is time for probably one of my uh, – I'm, I'm really enjoying doing this segment now. Um, and, and it stemmed from the wacky we, – we, we do wacky Game of the Week sometimes. This one is the canceled retro Game of the Week. I've been liking uh, this one, yeah. Yeah, it's really interesting to find out like games that were either the either almost came out or were in concept but never quite made it. And this one will probably be of particular interest to you. It's not necessarily a retro game, but it took the it, it took the retro style of a game for a newer system. Mm-hmm. And this week's canceled retro game is called Mega Man Universe. Have you heard of Mega Man Universe? Yes, I have heard about it. I was looking so forward to this. Yeah, so Mega Man Universe was um, was you know based on the you know Capcom's Mega Man franchise. It was going to be a platformer, three D side scrolling game for Xbox Live Arcade and PlayStation Network. Now, it was going to be mainly based off of the Mega Man Two game for Mega Man Universe, and it was actually also going to be the first game in Japan that was going to be called Mega Man because in Japan oh. the Mega Man series is called Rock Man. Mm-hmm. But they were actually going to use Mega Man Universe as Mega Man, which was really cool. Oh, wow. So, yeah, so the game was going to take its cue from Mega Man 2, um, for, uh, basically foregoing the special abilities introduced in the games in games afterwards. Um, 
It was given. It, it was going to give a little bit more of a rendered design with CG looking characters, but it was still going to take place. It was gonna, basically the main story was going to be based on Mega Man, the Mega Man Two game. Mm-hmm. However, in the game, players had the choice to construct their own levels, customize the existing levels and the obstacles and enemies and stuff like that, and then you could share those levels online, kind of like, similar to Super Mario Maker. Exactly. Exactly. Right. But this was actually supposed to come out, you know, I want to say back in 2012-ish or something like that. Um, So anyway, they were going to, um, uh, alongside the customizable character, you were going to be able to customize characters. And part of customizing the characters included other Capcom properties. So you could make like Ryu from Street Fighter or Arthur from Ghosts and Goblins. And then, you know, so... Um, they were bringing in other games, and then you were. Uh, there was also going to be DLC. Mm-hmm. Now, production for the game started in March 2010, um, and they released uh, a full gameplay trailer in September um, that basically showed the level editor, the character customization. Um, they also had uh, featured music by the cover band, The Megas. <laughs> you can imagine who they were. Um, however, a few months later... Um, what happened was the um, the artist and producer of the game left oh. Capcom, and then the game went silent during development for a while. Um, so, eventually, in March, at the end of March, March thirty first, twenty eleven, um, Capcom sadly announced that the game had been canceled uh, due to various circumstances, um, which I would interpret as. The producer left, and they couldn't find anybody else to pick it up from there. So, unfortunately, Mega Man Universe never came. However, we did get awesome games in Mega Man 9 and 10 um, that were on Xbox Live and Arcade and um, PlayStation. But, unfortunately, we could have had something really cool in terms of an online Mega Mega Man platformer. And Mega Man Universe is this week's canceled retro game. At the time we're recording this, we are just hours away from, well, now that we are a, uh, a podcast here, I guess legally we have to say, the big game. Yes, we are, we, are, we are counting down to the Super Bowl where two teams I could give a crap about are going to play each other for <laughs> some dumb trophy and a ring. <laughs> you said Super Bowl. Now we owe them a hundred and something thousand dollars. Oh, wait, am I, are we not allowed to say that? Ah, Super Bowl, whatever. I meant... I meant I meant, I meant a, it's going to be a Super Bowl of funness. <laughs> I got this giant <clears throat> Super Bowl that I'm putting stuff in. I know. I'm putting, like, chips and salsa in this Super Bowl. <laughs> Just to watch you know? millions and millions of dollars change hands all from the toss. Yeah. Of a or, player. you know, I'm going to take a virtual boy and stick it in this Super Bowl <laughs> and then launch it across oh. – <laughs> launch it across my yard – and watch it explode into a thousand pieces. It's like that pumpkin chuck uh, competition they do around. Uh, yes. The, uh, Halloween. <laughs> exactly. Except we're gonna do we're gonna do the virtual boy chuck. Oh, poor virtual boy. Yeah. You know, I, I was telling real quick. I was telling uh, Tristan because he had a couple of virtual boys he couldn't fix. When I was talking about the Game Gear, I couldn't fix. But I'd rather I'd keep the Game Gear. I'm like, oh, I wish, I wish I had even if it was broken, just a virtual boy to hold on to. Oh well. Well, you know, there's a reason why you don't have a virtual boy. Oh. Because because well, because think about it this way. You've tried you tried to buy it, right? And it was broken. And then you found a new store who ha- who was carrying the same broken one that you bought. Okay? <laughs> so the universe is telling you you cannot own this thing. <laughs> okay? The the house would have collapsed if I would have brought it in here. Yeah, like basically, it would have been like one of those, uh, you know, the uh, the paradoxes that Doc Brown would talk about in Back to the Future, where like the entire universe would implode, you know, <laughs> if if you had if you own the same Virtual Boy that you previously purchased that was broken. Oh, man, that'd be weird. <laughs> exactly. That'd be yeah. Well, we wouldn't be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so it's Super Bowl Sunday, Pats, Eagles, like Anthony said, and I agree with him. I really do not care. Who wins? I won't be watching, but there are... But you're a super huge Patriots fan. I was a super huge Patriots fan, but that's Oh, not, no. That's for a different podcast. If you want to listen to the Yin and the Yang podcast and my thoughts about the NFL, go right ahead. Look it up. Episode 19. What did Tom Brady do to you? Uh, <laughs> words I cannot use here. No, not Tom Brady, but it ends. <laughs> 
in any event, uh, just because the NFL uh, is is a big pile of garbage, does not mean that video games of football are garbage. Actually, there's been a lot of really good football games uh, to come out for for home consoles, and you know, I think I can safely say that uh, myself and Anthony, not really the biggest football uh, athletes um, that there are out there. You know, we're better at uh, sports. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. I was a huge football star. You <laughs> running back for for uh, for Brooklyn U. <laughs> hey, you, you know what? Uh, people seem to knock that, but it was a really great touch football game in the park. Okay. <laughs> That would be the XFL touch football. Uh, oh. f- football games that they. What, are, we, what are they? Wait, what are they touching? <laughs> Flags. It's a new oh, XFL. Okay. It's not the same one as before. Oh, lovely. <laughs> uh, game, f- uh, football games been around probably since the dawn of video games. Uh, let's go back even before, before home consoles. I mean, I, I guess it was technically before home consoles. Remember the little electronic football one, the one they actually used in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yes, I remember that game. That game was awesome. And which is funny, they actually sell it again now because of Guardians of the Galaxy? Of course, that just makes sense. <laughs> uh, so, you know, you had that, you had your, um, uh, which I still don't understand how they worked. Remember the, um, what they call them? It was like the board game football, and they would just vibrate up and down the field. Oh, yeah. It's like, like um, rumble football, whatever it was called. I forgot they called them. Yeah, football. something like that. Uh, and then you had your 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 video games, and the earliest one I remember, the earliest one I own. Do I own it now? Uh, um, no, I was know, foot, I did. Ten was yard, foot, Well, I was going to say ten yard fight. I wasn't the first uh, one. It's the first one I owned. No, no, no. Ten, yeah, ten yard fight. I think was the first one most people owned, at least um, from our generation. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it was just basic, simple football game. It was um, it was top to bottom screen, correct? Yep. And you a had vertical your little shooter, yeah. if you will. <laughs> yes, it's basically a vertical shooter throwing the football at somebody else, and uh, yeah, I mean, it was actually a cool little, uh, cool little game. It, it worked. Out. It did what it had to do. It did exactly what it had to do. Uh, and then, of course, games just eventually, the whole genre would just balloon from there. I mean, just to name a few, Joe Montana football was was one of the first ones I owned on Genesis. Oh yeah, and I remember. Um, I remember Genesis. Uh, Genesis. Um, Sega was all about trying to get a name attached to games whenever they could, in you know, as part of competing against Nintendo. Um, and you'll you'll hear me mention this stuff because uh, Console Wars, the book Console Wars, which, which I um, will be starting. Which you will be starting, you know, because I gave it to you for Christmas, and I understand giving you a book is like you know, I, I might as well have just given you a piece of charcoal, but. Um, <laughs> I can read. I'm smart. I even bought a book. Uh, well, book you know what? Now that you know, you know, now that now that you're boycotting the NFL, you should have all the downtime you can. But then again, it's off season anyway. After today, um, anyway. So uh, you know, console wars goes into all of this, and one of Sega's big driving force was getting names for video games. So you had Evander Holyfield boxing, and then you, and then of course they got it. They grabbed Joe Montana for their football franchises, and Joe um, Montana. You, Joe Montaigne. That's a different guy. So, um, and, you know, and they were right about it, though. Attaching a name to a series would, you know, was good for sales. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, later on, obviously, Madden ran away with it, with that. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, Matt, yeah Madden, <laughs> Madden realized, oh, I can make a lot of money doing absolutely. this. I believe Joe Montana Football may have been the first one with voice in it. Uh, it's entirely possible. I do not know. But something in me tells me there may have been something on, like, uh, you remember how, like, the Commodore, six, not the Commodore, uh, like, was it ColecoVision? I think it had that voice synth- synthesizer or something. So yes. I feel like, gut feel, and I'm, you know, I don't, forgive me because I'm kind of doing this off the top of my head. I, I feel like maybe ColecoVision or, one, or Television may have had the first one with, with text, uh, not text, with speech. But uh, I think Joe Montana may have been the first ones from the home console. Um, uh, then you had Quarterback Club. Now let's. Fi- I mean, Quarterback Club. I actually had on Game Boy. That was a good one too. Oh yeah, I remember that one. And I think you were right though about um, Joe Montana because they came out with um, that football game came out on Sega CD. Also, it did. I don't know uh, if you remember did, that. But but the one I'm talking about is the one on. Gen- yes, I do remember Sega CD. But the one on Genesis, I think, is the one I'm talking about. No, no, no. I understand that. I'm just saying. You know, I would assume that there was voice mm-hmm. involved because um, they came out. It also came out on Sega CD. Now, you have to, you know, one of the first things you got to ask yourself is, 
football's football. It's the same game. How can you how like there's so many different versions. How can you change it up to make it different from one another besides licensing? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, eventually when you got the real teams, I mean, Tecmo Bowl, one of the best football series out there, but it was until I don't even think till later, much later when they finally got the rights to use the team names, you just got the cities. Yes, and that was actually one of the issues with um, Joe Montana football because they had the rights to use Joe Montana, but they didn't have the rights to use the NFL team, so they made up, you know, they just used cities for the teams. It was when the Madden games came out. John Madden football, I believe, was the first game to actually have a full roster of all the NFL teams. Probably, I think so, yeah. I had that one. The first one I had was on Super Nintendo. I remember playing that a lot. Joe Montana football on Super Nintendo. Well, yeah. Uh, you, you mean um, John Madden? Oh, John Madden. Excuse me. Yes, that's what yeah. I'm John Madden. No, no, no. And I remember John Madden was definitely the, the preference because of the fact of, oh, I got to play as the New York Giants. I got to play as the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah. Or I got to play as, um, you know, the, the crappy New England Patriots. Um, and, you know. <laughs> but, uh, you. <laughs> no, I doesn't, I know it doesn't bother you at all, but boo. Um, so, um, yeah. So, I mean. Just instantly, and, and it's such a simple thing to add to a game, but it just legitimizes the game. And because it legitimizes oh, it, it makes it feel more real when you play. It's like, you know, it's like any sports game you play. It's like if you're playing, um, you know, if I gave you an option between, uh, you know, Power Move Pro Wrestling or WWE WrestleMania 2000, it's like, which one do you play? Exactly. You know, pa- you know Power Move Pro is a great wrestling game on the PlayStation. I'm like, but it has a bunch of no-name characters. WrestleMania 2000... As the full WWF roster, it's like exactly. you know, and then you same. get to the, and then you got to the point. I think, and it's kind of happened in hockey games as well. I think what came about first was the 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 players. Like first, you got the players in the game, but not necessarily the team names. And then eventually, when the team names came about, then when everybody's in there, kind of like I think like NHL PA ninety three. I think just yep. had like the official players, but not necessarily the hockey team names. Well, because what because I think what happened was uh, what happens is. They, um, I believe the companies have to strike a deal. Uh, they, they have to strike a deal in, in cases of that, like with the NHL Players Association as opposed to the NHL. Hence NHLPA. It's two, yeah. Right. It's two separate entities. That's why they had to differentiate it in the title, NHLPA. Yeah. Whereas then you, when you make a deal with the NHL, you know, then you get the rights to the teams. And I'm assuming you also make a deal with the NHLPA so you get the rights to the players. Exactly. And the same thing would happen... I would I, well and see and I'm not sure how it would work in football necessarily because do you go to the team separately to get the rights to every player or is there an NFL Players Association? I don't know. I think there's a players okay. association for every league. I think. Yeah. So so it's just basically I would assume making two deals except for obviously a marquee player like the way you would have a Joe Montana or a John Madden. Yeah. You know when you come you know when you come out and you name the game after them it's a separate deal. Exactly. So and again it just adds to the cachet of the game it's like okay i'm not just playing football i'm playing john madden football and you know to bring it into a little bit of uh gaming nowadays probably what destroyed the ability to get different gameplay mechanics which i'll explain in a moment for football games it uh what five six years ago maybe ea struck a deal with football where only Madden games were the only games to be licensed by the NHL where they can use the real teams. No other football games can use the actual team names. And they put a lock on that. And that's really what yeah. put the kibosh on other football games. Because uh, let's go back to 2005. The Not even 2005. Probably, in my opinion, one of the best football games in history was ESPN 2K5. Oh yeah, on Xbox. Yeah, game was the, yeah, phenomenal. Well, and the ESPN 2K series was the reason why I started playing football games again because I was never a big fan of football. Like somewhere in the early '90s, I was watching a lot of football, um, but uh, and I don't know why, uh, <laughs> but because football, I don't know, football never struck a chord with me. And but I wasn't playing a lot of football games, and then. Uh, I think it was on N64, I played uh, NFL Quarterback Club 99. Yes. And I really enjoyed that game. And then on Dreamcast, like, then I got my Dreamcast, and ESPN, uh, and, uh, the two, uh, 2K Sports came out with 
uh, NHL and NFL. So I bought both of them. And the NFL 2K game, I fell in love with. I was like, holy crap. I go, I don't watch football. I was like, but this game is awesome. Yeah. And then every year, they kept, you know, they, 2K1, 2K2, so on and so forth. When they got to 2K5, 2K5, to your point, that was the pinnacle yep. of the ESPN 2K series. It Like, if you don't, uh, anybody listening, if you do not have a copy of 2K5, I was like, and you love playing football games, you owe it to yourself to go pick that up. It is a phenomenal football game. Absolutely. And don't forget, you know, don't let the part that it's like, what, 12, 13 years old bother you. Don't, it's football as it is. Great game, great mechanics. And that's what makes all these different games. That's how you change the game of a football video game. Like you said, 10-yard mm-hmm. fight was kind of like a vertical scroller. You went up and down. Yeah. Tecmo Bowl was a side to side scroller. If yeah. you will, yeah. Um, and then, you know, later on, then you like the Maddens. I mean, we can only really talk Madden because Madden's dominated. Um, you know, then you have games that change the perspective. I forgot which Madden game it was. You can play vertically. You can play horizontally. You can play with an image from the blimp, like these little dots on the field. <laughs> you know, that's well, which which, which would, which would kind of resemble the original handheld football game you were just talking about. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, as much as nowadays we don't have a, we don't we don't have any difference in football games. Uh, I like. I could t- I could say say in baseball there's been different games. You have MLB the Show, which is kind of the go to baseball game. But you also now have I picked up RBI Baseball 17. It's just a fun arcade type game to play. I got it on the Switch. And oh, cool. Uh, you know you have all right. Yeah, you got NHL series. There's really not many different other NHL games out there. Uh, but football. You know, you used to have all these different types of games. I remember the first, not the first, one of the, my first loves, I guess, for football video games was Tecmo. Tecmo, Tecmo Super Bowl three. Te- yeah, Te- Tecmo Super Bowl. I loved specifically Super Bowl three. Okay, but what's um, up with Super Bowl? It's just so cool. the one I happened to buy. You okay, know, it was the newest one at the time. I remember the first game I played. Yes, I was New England against Miami against no two games, and I won. 173 to, like, 6. <laughs> wow. I was like, oh, okay. And I'm not even I'm not even exaggerating those numbers. It was ridiculous. Uh, so, so that's when I kind of fell in love with the Tecmo series. And I'm really happy that I saw Tecmo Bowl come out on the NES Classic. Uh, I thought that was actually, a, I think, a better pick. Yes, the nostalgia would have been, would have been with 10-yard fight. But I think Tecmo Bowl was a better choice to put on the... Uh, the uh, the series, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, do you, besides ESPN, do you remember playing any other like football games, like even earlier, whether it be on Genesis or, or Nintendo, Super Nintendo? No, I think my my big ones were uh, my big ones were to your point, uh, Ten Yard Fight, Tecmo Super Bowl was one of my favorite Tecmo Bowl and Tecmo Super Bowl. I used to play. There was a long gap in between the sixteen bit ones. I really didn't touch um, because at that point, I think I started to get into hockey. More okay. okay. So I that's when I started picking up hockey games uh, over football games. Mm-hmm. But then, like I said, N sixty four when Quarterback Club came out, I was like, oh, cool. I go because this was also kind of like the first real to me. Those were like the first real like three D kind of yes. football games. Yes. So so I played Quarterback Club nine, I think ninety nine and two thousand, and then NFL two K came out, and the rest is history. I have actually not gone back to football games since the 2K series. I don't blame you. Um, I'll be honest with you. I've bought I see, a couple uh, Maddens, but... Yeah, I mean, I, it seemed to fall out of favor with me. But it also, again, it was also be, it also became a thing like, um, you know, I, be, I became a diehard hockey fan. Mm-hmm. So for me, it was like, do I want to play through a football season or do I want to play through a hockey season? And granted, football seasons are only 16 games. It would probably be a lot easier for me to do that <laughs> as opposed to... 82 game NHL season, but let's face it, I am an NHL fan, so I would always buy the NHL games. Fair enough. Let us know some of your favorite football games that are out there on any system, any handheld, maybe even. Uh, put the post up, facebook.com slash retro gamers podcast. Let us know some of your favorite football games, and, uh, you know. And we hope you enjoyed the Super Bowl, or more importantly, the commercials that air during it. All right, Larry, it's time for another uh, mini segment that uh, we seem to love to do so much. And uh, we're introducing a new one this week, and we're going to call this one uh, Retro Birthdays. Sure. Retro Birthdays or something like that. Sounds, we'll uh, come up with something. 
Yeah, we'll come up with some name. But right now, we're going to celebrate a very special retro birthday or retro anniversary, if you will. Uh, it's a game near and dear to both of our hearts and probably near and dear to most people that are listening to our podcast. So we would like to wish a very, very happy 30th birthday to the one and only Konami Code Loving Contra. Great, probably the greatest game on the NES, probably the greatest series in my opinion. Um, uh, arguably, yes. Uh, it, it's definitely one of the greatest side-scrolling yep. uh, platformers in history. Uh, one of the best shooters I think ever made. Uh, I, I, unlike you, never really got... Um, like, I, I played Contra, but never really played the other ones. Like, Super mm-hmm. C. Like, I played a little Super C, but never really got yeah. beyond Contra. Like, to me, Contra was the definitive platformer shooter game. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people agree with that. And now the fact that it is 30, 30 years old, it is three decades old, uh, which makes me realize not only has this game been around for so long and, um, you know, has definitely earned its right in the, you know, well, will eventually be the video game Hall of Fame. I think this is definitely one of those Hall of Famers. Uh, it also makes me realize that 30 years ago I was actually old enough to play the game, which makes me feel even older. Uh, <laughs> And uh, as sad as that might be, just a tad, um, we should be rejoicing in the 30 years of Contra. (laughs) Absolutely. I'm going to say it right now. Besides Contra and Super C, go out and try Operation C on Game Boy. Fantastic version of the game. Contra Hardcore, I talked about earlier. It's one I picked up on Genesis. And, um, you know, Contra 3, The Alien War on Super Nintendo. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember The Alien Wars. I remember playing it. It's on the classic. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah, for anybody out there, if you're Contra lovers, there are a number of different games to get. But there is only one original Contra, and it turns 30 this month. Happy birthday, Contra. All right, so that's going to bring us uh, closer to the end here of another wonderful episode of the podcast. Good stuff, good stuff. Yes, it's uh, it's been another week. Uh, It's been uh, some good times talking about some old gaming and some, uh, well... Maybe some not so good times reminiscing about awful stuff like the Virtual Boy. Oh, oh wait, that's right. We didn't talk about the Virtual Boy. This was a good week. We <laughs> remember you said you were going to launch it in a big giant Super Bowl. Yes, exactly, and that made me that, that actually made me smile. <laughs> well, what should make everyone smile is actually in a couple of weeks we have the Aviators Retro Gaming Tournament and Expo coming up Saturday, February seventeenth, from eleven to five at Aviator Sports and Events Center in Brooklyn. Actually, our old stomping grounds where we were uh, born and raised. Over there yes, Floyd looking Field. forward to that. Yes. Definitely looking forward to that. It's going to be awesome. Uh, check out the links on our page of facebook.com slash retrogamerspodcast. If you buy the tickets through Eventbrite and use promo code retrogamerspod, you will save 20% off early expo adult tickets and tournament entry tickets. Um, And speaking of tournaments, we have NBA Jam, MLB Slugfest, NFL Blitz, talking about Super Bowl Sunday, NHL 94, WWF No Mercy, and just added Super Smash Bros. Melee. Yeah, I suck at that game. On top of that, uh, you can buy games, trade games, sell games. They're going to have a bunch of vendors there. Um, We're going to be there. The Retro Gamers will be represented. We actually have a table. Um, and we will be live streaming. We will be doing a podcast, and we'll have a couple systems set up, TV set up, just for fun, just to play, just to chill. Mm-hmm. Yes, and, uh, and, th- and that'll be cool. It'll be, you know, we're gonna we'll uh, well, provided I fly in. I don't know if I'm gonna fly in yet. So La- Larry may be there solo as one half of the retro gamers. Uh, the cooler half is stuck in LA. Um, <laughs> but, or it could um, be a better half podcast, depending on who else may show up. Uh, it could be if somebody else shows up. Uh, it could be a yin and a yang if somebody else shows up. Uh, um, better half. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes. But anyway, um, yeah. So it'd just be an opportunity to kind of hang out, meet you know, meet other other fellow retro gamers, and you guys can uh, just you know hang out and play some games with us. Absolutely. Also, other attendees besides us, just give them some shout outs. Team One Up them, glossed over Brooklyn Comic Shop. Our new friends over at Bit Happens. They do a lot of cool stuff with Perler beads. Uh, mm-hmm. Grandstand Sports and Memorabilia, Kingdom of Benome. I'm going to say that. Hopefully that's correct. Nerd Swap NYC and Gianni Rachanti. I'm probably mispronouncing your name again. I apologize. 
But check it all out. Again, that is Saturday, February 17th, 2018, the Aviators Retro Gaming Tournament and Expo from the Aviator Sports and Events Center. Check it out. We will be there. Please come, enjoy, have a good time. One final thing I'm going to close on is, Ant, um, you know, last week, two weeks ago, maybe at this point, you were at SoCal Expo. You were gracious enough to uh, pick up, which I still owe you for, yes, uh, a copy <laughs> of uh, the Ultimate NES Guide uh, from Pat yes. NES Punk. Got it autographed. Awesome. I know this will not offset or, or be equal to the book, but on its way to you, um, I did pick up a copy for you so you can enjoy at home. Make sure I'm showing it on the camera there. Legend of Zelda Parallel Worlds, the hack that I was telling you about. Ooh. The ridiculously hard hack of yes. the past. So I'm going to get that in the mail for you this week. Uh, thank you. I still have your book here. <laughs> then I will be keeping this until the book arrives. Yes, you, yeah, you can keep it. Like um, I meant to, I, yes, I meant to get to the post office this weekend, but that unfortunately did not happen. I was caught up uh, <laughs> running, errand, running errands and such. No um but uh, uh, also now apparently I'm, I'm holding on to it as a part of a barter, a potential barter <laughs> trade with you for your Sega Genesis. <laughs> oh, oh, I will talk about that after afterwards. So, um, <laughs> so with that, check us out everywhere you listen to podcasts. Also, besides Apple Podcasts on Spreaker, iHeartRadio, uh, iTunes, Amazon Alexa, YouTube. You know, give us love, give us shares, give us likes. Give us a subscription. Well, uh, please, I, I have to say, I'm going to rescind the part where he said to give us love. Um, I don't want that to be misinterpreted in any way, shape, or form. The retro gamers are not literally looking for love. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I may be on a few dating sites. I don't know. Yes, but uh, but let, let's 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 not talk about that here. <laughs> it's a different podcast for that a is, different time. That is true. Uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Please continue to listen. Please share. Please share our links. Please share our podcast. You know, otherwise we're just talking to each other, and that's not fun. We've been doing that for all too long. Uh, yeah, a little bit. So check us out next week, and we will see you right here next week on the Retro Gamers. <laughs>